Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Kat. And I'm Jess. And today we are talking about number 174, Shutter Island, which is a mystery thriller film from 2010. This has an 8.1 on 1,050,756 votes. It's a lot of votes. Yeah. <coughs> um, our mystery line that we are revealing today is from How to Train Your Dragon. And it was, you make me want to be a better man. Nobody guessed it correctly. And it is from As Good As It Gets. So we've got three colors left, green, red, and dark blue. Red. All right. The line is, you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> so make sure you take your guess on that. It will be revealed in our Rebecca episode. Um. The spoiler-free synopsis for this film, The Implausible Escape of a Brilliant Murderess Brings U.S. Marshal Teddy Daniels and His New Partner to Ashcliff Hospital, a fortress-like insane asylum located on a remote, windswept island. The woman appears to have vanished from a locked room, and there are hints of terrible deeds committed within the hospital walls. As the investigation deepens, Teddy realizes he will have to confront his own dark fears if he hopes to make it off the island alive. All right. Um, so this is directed by Martin Scorsese. He's actually quite a, got a, quite a few on our list. Um, he has The Wolf of Wall Street, which is number four, 148. The Departed, which is number 40. And Goodfellas. Which is number 17. This stars Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Mark Ruffalo, Emily Mortimer. I gotta add these two in because they have some bigger parts in here too. Uh, Michelle Williams and Ben Kingsley. Yeah. Um. So. The ratings on this, on IMDb, 32% of user, users rated this at an 8. It has a 63% on Metacritic. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 68% on 255 critical reviews. Two of the fresh, Robert Cargill, a brilliantly constructed mystery. Short and simple. <laughs> it's like, here you go. Um, Sarah Knight Adamson. Shutter Island is a very well-made film that captures the genre of mystery similar to the Twilight Zone episodes and the renowned Hitchcock films. I like that one. That's some pretty high, pr high praise there. Yeah, Twilight Zone and Hitchcock. Yeah. Then Two Rotten. Nigel Andrews. Since Scorsese is a stylist, the film is enjoyable. It would be more so if you could take out your brain and experience it with your eye. Experience it only with your eyes and ears. <laughs> so they don't want to think when they're watching a movie. Is that what I'm guessing? I guess so. <laughs> I can understand that sometimes. Like, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's just too much. Like, you come home from work and you just want to watch a movie and then you gotta actually think about it and it's just like, nope, never mind. <laughs> Turning that one off. Um, Adam Woodward. The problem arrives in the film's hurried final act where a hitherto steady narrative gives way to an engorged twist that 
whilst believable, insults the audience's comprehension of everything that has come before. I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> I didn't feel insulted. No. <laughs> um, so the consensus. It may not rank with Scorsese's best work, but Shutter Island... Shutter Island's gleefully unapologetic genre thrills represent the director at his most unrestrained. I don't know. Okay. No, that was confusing. <laughs> I was like, I think it is one of his best ones, but that's me. I don't know. I mean, like, I know, I love Goodfellas, but that's another one of his movies, but I think this one's up there with it. It's been a while since I've seen some of his other stuff, so I don't know. This one's my favorite <laughs> of the ones he's seen, I've seen, so. And it's like, my little brother loves Goodfellas, so we watch it a lot. That's how I know it very well. Gotcha. So, the money. The budget for this was $80 million. Opening weekend, it made $41,062,440. Domestically, it made $128,012,934. Internationally, it made $166,791,261 for a worldwide total of two two million nine. Two hundred ninety-four million eight hundred four thousand one hundred and ninety-five dollars, and its top lifetime gross was nine hundred. Huh. that's a decent number. Yeah, I think it's up there with the higher ones that we've done. Um, so the awards. This did not win any Oscars. Probably partially because it came out in February, which is a trash month. Pretty much <laughs> January and February. <laughs> movie, movie producers are like, yep, we're going to make this, but we're going to put it in February or January because we're not sure. We're like, eh. It'll be okay. Um, so the awards... It did win. It had 11, and then it was nominated for 65 others. So, Awards Circuit Community Awards. It won Best Art Direction, and it got an honorable mention for the next 10 Best Picture contenders. But then it wasn't even nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. Um, let me look and see real quick what actually won Best Picture that year. The King's Speech. That's a good movie. So, I have. I don't think I've seen that one, but I have. <laughs> it's good. That's a hint at what kind of movies were actually Best Picture contenders. <laughs> um. So then, the Grand Premio International del uh, del Doppiaggio. It won Best Picture, Best Supporting Voice Actor uh, for the dubbing of Ben Kingsley's role. Um, I think that's Italian Awards. Um, so they really liked it over in Italy. That's good. And then the Italian Online Movie Awards, Best Actor. National Border Review, Best Production Design, and Top Ten Films. Russian National Movie Awards, Best Foreign Drama Movie. San Diego Film Critics Society Awards, Best Production Design. Scream Awards, Best Best Scream Play. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the Teen Choice Awards, Choice Movie Actor for the Horror Thriller Genre, Leonardo DiCaprio. And that's all the awards it got. Which is actually quite a bit for a movie that comes out in February. Exactly. Because <laughs> normally January and February movies are just kind of junk filler movies because not many people are going 
to the movies after the holidays, so. I do, but I love the movies. Yeah, as I say, we're not most people. I know, we're not. Um, so, initial thoughts. Do you want me to go first? Go for it. I remember exactly when I watched this. I watched it in the movie theaters when it came out. Uh, I watched it with a couple of my high school friends because it came out when I was in high school. And after we watched the movie, we went to like a local restaurant and just talked about it the entire time we were at the restaurant and just like picking it apart. So that means we really liked it. (laughs) I love this movie. It's like, it's one of my favorite Scorsese movies for sure. It doesn't help Leonardo DiCaprio's in it, too. And he's amazing in it. I just love him. But I'm a Leo fan. And then I found out this was a book, and I was like, oh, man, I want to read this book sometime. And then I found out this was on the list. I'm like, yes! Awesome. Now I have an excuse to read the book. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I really liked it. Like, I got sucked in when I watched it the first time. Yeah. And then it says in there there's a twist ending. I didn't expect that at all the first time I watched it. But when I watched it again recently, I was like, okay, I know what's going to happen. So I look for all the signs. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, overall, I really like it. Um, I don't remember the first time I watched it. Uh, I do know I liked it because I've seen it a few times. I was super excited when I found out it was a book because I knew I liked the movie. And I was super excited to see how well done it was. Because that's always my thing is like I'm super curious all the time to figure out how well these people follow what they are given. And how much they like take liberties on. Yeah. So it was really cool like reading it. And it's cool because like, you're reading it and I'm like sitting there imagining exactly what happens in the movies. And it, it follows it really well. It follows the book really well, so I liked that. Um, the twist ending, the first time I didn't see it coming, but then after reading the book and watching it this last time, I was, like, sitting there looking for all the clues to the twist ending. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the one thing I will say is I thought that the book was a little bit more ambiguous than the movie is. Yes. I would agree um, with that. You can interpret the movie... They pretty much give you one specific way to interpret it, but then the book, you you can interpret it either way you want to, really. And it's really just one line that makes it that way. Yes. At the end. One line makes the movie more or less ambiguous than the book. So, which I think is kind of good. Changes it a little bit. Yeah. Makes you not quite expect it entirely if you've read the book before you watch the movie. So, but I do enjoy this movie. I was like, if I were you, don't read the book. If you've never seen this movie, don't read the book yet. Because they're ruining it for you. I'll say that. Well, that's if you prefer watching movies. If yeah. If you prefer reading books, definitely read the book first. I know, but just, like, don't spoil it for yourself. <laughs> if you just want to watch the movie. Yeah. Well, if they just want to watch the movie, I highly doubt they're going to read the books. So. <laughs> they might get interested. I don't know. That was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening and come back after you've watched it. So we start off, uh, 1954. Yeah, it says Boston Harbor Islands. Yeah, and see a boat, and then see someone (laughs) with their head down the toilet, throwing up. And that is Teddy, um, who Leonardo DiCaprio plays. And then we get to meet his new partner, Chuck, played by Mark Ruffalo. And then they're just kind of talking, like... Um, trying to get to know each other a little bit before they get to the island. Uh, like, Teddy mentions how, um, his wife, because, you know, 
Chuck asked him, you know, he got like a girl or something, and he's like, I really don't want to talk about it, but my wife did like die in a fire. Yeah. And Chuck says he's from Seattle, so he's only been working with the Marshalls for like a few years. Yeah. Teddy keeps trying to say he's from Portland. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I think that we'll have to talk about it when we get to the end, but I think that might be a clue that we aren't really let in on him continually saying Portland. Um, but when we get to the end, I'll write it down. Okay. And then we could talk about it. Um, but so they get to the Island and we get, we finally see it and we see like all the little buildings and everything. And the captain of the ship is like, y'all need to hurry up and get off this ferry. Cause I'm heading back as soon as you're gone. And like, what's the hurry? There's a storm coming. And what they don't say is that it's a hurricane coming. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I want to get away from this hurricane. But. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's smart. <laughs> like, get out on this island a weekend of a hurricane. I mean, you're <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're smart. <laughs> but um, they're greeted by a bunch of the guards and... He's not the warden, but he's, like, the one right under the warden. Um, McPherson yeah. greets them. And he's, like, kind of telling them a little bit about Ashcliff. And he's saying, we've got three wards, A, B, and C. A is over on that side. B is over on that side. And C is the big one up there, the fort-looking one. Yeah. And that's where the most dangerous prison- prisoners are um, held. Then they get to the gate, I guess, to, like, the main building. They get to there, and McPherson's like, all right, now that you've had your introductions, you're not getting through this gate without giving me your guns, because you can't have guns here because there are so many people. But then, like, all of the guards that are standing outside the gates all have guns. <laughs> and I'm just like, mmm. It's like, if that's... they work there, I think it's okay. But if it's, like, you know, people coming in... Well, they're federal marshals, so technically they're supposed to have them at all times. So that's kind of like another little clue there that something is wrong. And then also the fact that um, Chuck can't seem to get his gun out of his It's like McPherson gives like a he very can... good reason why, too. Well, I mean, I understand that you're like on an island with crazy people. You're not going to want people they don't know having guns. But still, federal marshals, they're supposed to have their guns supposed to and teddy does say that hey, he's like we're federal marshals we gotta have them they're like, yeah he's no. like throwing a fit <laughs> but it's funny because uh chuck is like struggling with his gun that's another clue there it's like clue yeah you just there's so many clues all over the place if you're not paying attention he's watching you're like okay yeah like the first time watching this i was just like oh he must be new and not quite sure how to get that out because like I've never done it if I was pretty new and didn't do it like all the time then I would struggle with it a little bit exactly then of course he said he was working for a few years so he should know how to do it if you're working (laughs) for a few years every single day you come home you take that gun out of the like you take the holster out of your pants and put it down you know I don't like wear it all the time so um, but then they're, like, w- walking around outside, heading into the thing, and then there's this crazy old lady outside. <laughs> she's, the, like, real creepy looking. The creepy lady? The one that's got, like, hair? Like, she's balding pretty much, and she's got, like, whispers of hair? Yeah, and, like, the bright, like, almost ice blue eyes. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, shh. Yeah. I'm like, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> yeah. And then they... They go inside and they meet with Dr. Colley, who is played by Ben Kingsley. And they're just kind of talking to him about, like, the missing missing patient, uh, Rachel. Um, she's trying to find out the information that they need to know. He, like, he tells them how, like, she's in here because she killed her three children. 
Yeah. And that her husband died in the war. Yep. And that was something that I was kind of like, I figure that would be like patient confidentiality thing. Like, why do they need to know she's in there? They just need to know she's missing and she's dangerous. <laughs> they don't really need to know what she did. But that was just my mind, like, wondering that because of the amount of crime shows I watch, they don't always reveal that. So yeah. I'm like, um, <laughs> that was just something I was wondering. Um, but once you get, like, further in, it makes sense as to why they said it because it, it's kind of like another clue without really being a clue. Yeah, and they show pictures of her and he kind of like flashes back to like his war stuff really quick. Yeah, and you see there's a bunch of dead frozen people on the ground in the war. And then they're like trying they're talking about how they don't know how she got out of the room. And then they go see the room. You know, like looking around and there's literally nowhere to hide in that room. Yeah, and Teddy, like, he sees, like, this, was it, tile or something? Yeah. That he picks up, and there's a piece of paper underneath it. Yeah. And it says on there, the law of four, who is 67. Yeah. And that's another, like, that's, like, a clue for him, but it's also, like, a clue in the fact that it also gets you thinking about, like, well, what's going on? And then at the end when you get that twist, you're like, oh, that's what that was talking about. You're like, so, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, then they go down to the common room and they're talking about how there's like seven or eight orderlies or something uh, playing cards down in that room. So there's no way she could have gotten around them because they're like playing right at the bottom of the stairs. And Teddy's asking to, like, to see, you know, like, um, the records of, like, all the people that work there. Like, the doctors and the nurses. Yeah. And Dr. Clyde's like, okay, we'll see, you know. But, it, yeah. you, you know, it probably won't happen. And then, so. They're outside. They, yep, they start going outside and searching around. And Teddy sees the, um lighthouse and he's like pretty curious about that he asks what it is and they're like oh it's a uh, sewage treatment plant and I'm just like uh okay <laughs> like that's not what lighthouses are used for but okay like whatever you want to call it yeah and then they go back inside and Teddy and Chuck are talking to the staff, like, just kind of questioning them about that night. Like, was there anything out of the ordinary going on in the group session? Um, was anybody, like, not where they were supposed to be type thing? Did anybody leave? Yeah. <laughs> and there was one orderly who did leave for, like, a minute, he says, who went to the bathroom. And then he gets griped at cause he broke protocol. It's like, well, there's supposed to be someone there at all times, so. Yeah. Oh, my God. Leave me alone, people. Um. <laughs> but then they also talk about how Dr. Sheehan is the one who was running the session. And he left on the ferry that they came in on. But I was like... That's kind of a clue, too, because they didn't show anybody except for the guards out there. Like, nobody getting on or off the boat. It was just Teddy and Chuck. Yeah, so I'm like, mm, either that guy doesn't exist or <laughs> something's going on. But they're like, well, we need to talk to him, like, right now. So you need to call him on the phone. And they're like, well, he's on his vacation. <laughs> And they're like, the question, they're like, why did you let the person who is, like, the primary, you know, psychiatrist for this patient that has escaped go on vacation? It's yeah. like, so many questions there. I'm like, and they're logical questions. I mean. Yeah. Well, and they give logical answers, too. Like, he's been planning this vacation for, like, a year. And 
we're gonna let him go because it's like already paid for or whatever. I'm like, well, that's understandable. <laughs> like, like, I was get just that. like, yep, I accept. I accept your explanation. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they try calling, but it says that everything is like down because the storm yeah. coming in. Yeah. So. Then the doctor, like, uh, Dr. Colley invites him, or both of them, to his house later to continue their discussion. And then we get uh, them going to the actual house. Hold on. What do you want? Someone stole our driveway. Who? I have no idea. Is Sean here? No. Our, show, our driveway inside was on show. I wonder if it was those boys that lived two doors down. You remember the ones at the trampolines ended up in the backyard? Because they shovel our neighbor's driveway. Yeah, no idea, but yeah, our driveway is shoveled. Oh, cool. That was nice. Yeah. Awesome. Now I don't have to do it. <laughs> um, but so they get to the doctor's, um, Dr. Collie's house and it, it's like a really nice house, and they're saying that it was in the time of the war that this fort was built in. They built this house as, like, the general's house or something like that. Yeah. I, th- I think... <sighs> God, I keep yawning. I'm sorry. Um, but then we also meet another doctor. Uh, doctor... Uh, n- Naring? Yeah. I just started I go- using Dr. N at some yeah. points. Because, like, I'm not yeah. going to write all that out. I was like, uh, German doctor. Is what <laughs> I was like, that'll German work. doctor. Just call it good. <laughs> That's what I called him. <laughs> but he's there with Dr. Kali, and they're having some drinks and stuff. And he, like, goes on about violent men and all this, that, and the other. And... Teddy kind of gets mad. And he's also, while he's there, having some more of his war flashbacks. He has them quite a bit throughout this movie. His war flashbacks. Um, But then the German doctor guy says that they can't have the patient files or the uh, staff files or any of that. And that makes Teddy mad again. (laughs) And so he's like, well, I'm going to leave then. And then Dr. Colley tells him that they'll discuss more in the morning. And then they head back to, I guess, the main building. And McPherson, I think, is the one that tells him, oh, you're going to stay in the uh, orderly's quarters. Yes, where they stay. he does. Then we see Teddy trying to figure out the riddle, the law of four thing, but it's just like, it's two sentences. There's not really anything to figure out. Yeah. And he's thinking that Rachel was helped out. Yeah. Because he's like, there's no way she got past all those people. Oh, and one thing we forgot to mention is they are only given two pairs of shoes and both of her pairs of shoes were in the room. So she was walking so she was barefoot. Like, yeah. And then they keep he's dreaming of his wife. I'm guessing in like their apartment yeah. where she supposedly died. It, and she keeps saying, She's here, she's here. And she has like found like his alcohol bottles because he used to drink a lot. Yeah, she's mad about that. And then there's like Water and ash and all kinds of stuff. Her and back then, is half burned and was like crumbling. Yeah. And then she gets done saying she's here and she keeps saying he's here. And so that immediately makes Teddy think Andrew Latest because that's who Teddy thinks killed her. Like set the fire that killed her. And then... He wakes up and there's water leaking on him from the yep. pipe above him. Yep, because it's kind of raining outside. Because the storm has started coming, but not quite hit entirely yet. So it is raining. 
So water's dripping in. And then they're back to investigating again. It, it, he's asked to speak with the patients that were in Rachel's uh, group session. Yeah, so he talks to two of them. One of them, he is freaking crazy. Like, keep him locked up. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, it, you like, it looks, he starts, like, he looks normal, you know, that's just how it is, and then he starts talking. You're like, yeah. please stop. It's like, she made me do it. I'm like, oh, Lord. Yeah. You're, you name, deserve to be in here. That patient's name is uh, Peter Byrne. Um, but he's, like, saying that she wanted him to whip it out so she could laugh at it. And I'm just like, who? What? How did we get there? Like, and because he was just like, he thought that they were trying to talk to him about his crime he committed in to get in there. And that's not what they wanted to talk about. They're like, can we talk about Rachel now? <laughs> he, and then he asks about, um, he asks him about Andrew if he's there. If he knows yeah. him. And that kind of drives him crazy, and he's like, doesn't want to talk anymore. He's like, nope. And, yeah. So, then they bring in another lady, um, Bridget Kearns, and she killed her husband with an axe, and then she's the same way. Like, she starts talking about the crime that she committed. I love she's hers. Like, <laughs> she's like, well, if he was out drinking and cheating every night you'd ask him too and i was like yeah yeah i probably would i mean i was like that's funny i was like i laughed so hard at that part i'm like yeah honey that's so true yeah i, I that mean it's funny <laughs> and what was it chuck's like yeah you deserve to be in here <laughs> and they're asking her about like you know like how rachel was acting in the group session and everything and it seems to teddy that she's been rehearsed on what she yeah. should say and she asks um, Chuck to get her some water, and so he does, and she grabs Teddy's notebook and writes something in it really quickly, then gives it back to him. Yeah, and we don't get to see what it is yet. We get to see it in a few minutes. But she's just kind of one of those that she seems sane, but she doesn't really regret what she did, so that's why they think she's crazy. It's like, well, I mean, the dude had it coming. I mean, this just, just reminded me of Chicago, honestly. That part. <laughs> oh, I love that song. <laughs> exactly. That's like one of the only musicals that I've seen that I'm not mad that I watched. <laughs> I was like, because it's a good one. I mean, it's talking about you know, like murder and all that. Yeah, I like I like the music in that one too. And then I like the Disney remake of He Had It Coming. <laughs> I listen to that all the time. <laughs> I don't know who does it, but I love the Disney remake because it's so <laughs> funny. That's what it reminded me of, but I always think of a musical somehow. Yeah. Always. But yeah, she like freaks out when they ask her about Andrew. And then that's when he like, um, he's ta they're talking later and he's like, yeah, definitely coached. Um, and Chuck's like, uh, who is this Andrew latest guy you keep talking about? Why do you keep asking? Yeah, and he says that Andrew Latus is the man who set the fire that killed his wife, and he was sent here after no prison was able to, like, contain him. But as soon as he was sent here, all record of him went away. So they're, like, out searching the island, and he's like, the only place people wouldn't suspect you to look is in the cemetery. So they go look for the cemetery and then he shows chuck the note that the crazy lady wrote that says run and i like how they're just walking out in the middle of this storm too it's like raining really hard yeah <laughs> it's like raining so hard that like tree branches are falling down and almost knocks them out yeah storm's getting super bad and so they go into the mausoleum and sit there and wait for a little while Till McPherson comes and picks him up. Um, but we get another war flashback while they're in the mausoleum slash... Or, yeah, the mausoleum. And while we're getting the war flashbacks, we also get Teddy telling Chuck, like, about the war and, like, what happened. He's talking about how he was at Dachau. Yeah, and how he um, 
lined up the guards and they just killed them all. Yeah, just shot them all down. And Chuck's like, are you going to kill Latus? And Teddy's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. He's like, because he's like, after, you know, this person's name just randomly disappears, he's been doing some checking on Ashcliff and um, finds out the hospital's doing experiments. Yeah, because he's like, there's patients that come here that end up disappearing somehow. And it's just like, well, where do they go type thing. And he talks about how he got in a hold of a, a former patient from there who was in prison, uh, George Noyce. Yeah. And how Noyce was saying that they for sure were experimenting on people and he didn't ever want to go back. But <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> um, and he's so tight. like, I'm going to get proof of, like, experiments and all of that and so I can just yeah. blow this whole thing up Yeah. and Chuck's like what happens if you were just set up just to come here he's like well how do they know I was researching them they're like you never know these they house crazy people <laughs> so I'm like that's, that's kind of a good point like how are you supposed to not think that <laughs> but um then McPherson comes like they hear him yelling which I'm just like, how do you hear him yelling like over a hurricane? Yeah, is my thing. I'm like but, he must be re- yelling really loudly, or that yeah. storm is not that powerful. Yeah. So take them. They take them back, and their suits are getting cleaned. So they are given orderly uniforms, and then they are taken into a meeting with all the doctors. Like all the doctors are in there talking about, like the storm and what they're what they're gonna do if the power goes out, this, that, and the other type thing. And they say something about sixty six patients, and that sparks Teddy. He's like, you don't know who is sixty seven. Like you just said, you have sixty six patient. Rachel's suggesting you have sixty seven, and he's like, um, no. <laughs> And then they find out that they found Rachel. Surprise. Yeah. And so they see her. And she see that she doesn't have shoes on. Yeah, but her feet are not damaged at all. No, they look okay. They says, look a little dirty, but not too bad. It'd be worse off, if, like especially if you're running around a place with no shoes on. And there's like a bunch of rocks and stuff. I mean, your feet would yeah. be way worse off. Yeah, because she said she was down at the shore skipping rocks. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Thanks. I'm like, your feet would be cut up. Yeah. Like, there's only been one time I have ever seen somebody out in, like, a terrain like that that didn't have cut up feet. And I was, like, talking to her because we were, I was, it was on the incline, which is, if you're not from Colorado, um, it's, like, this big set of stairs in a mountain that people just for fun go and climb. Yeah. And I've done it. I don't know why I've done it. It's good exercise. That's about the only reason. I'm like, you've but done there it a was, few times. Yeah, I've done it, I think, probably ten times now. Wow. That's yeah. good. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> I gotta go back and do it again because that's when I was in, like, really good shape and doing it. So, but anyways, there was this girl on it one time when I went and she had no shoes on and I was, like, talking to her and she's like, she doesn't wear shoes anywhere. And that's literally the only time I've ever seen anyone that doesn't have cut up feet. Like, yeah, her feet were dirty, but I didn't, like, see any cuts or bleeding or anything because she had so many calluses on her feet from years of not wearing shoes. That's what I was going to say. Like, her feet probably have built up such a callus that nothing really affects them anymore. Yeah, but I highly doubt this mental patient has that many calluses on her feet that all her all it is going to be is her feet being dirty when she goes out in something like that. Exactly. So, so they're like questioning her and what she did yesterday and she's like she thinks that like she's delusional she still thinks that she's at home and these people are all like delivery men and stuff so she thinks that 
Teddy and Chuck are cops looking for a communist in her neighborhood. (laughs) And at first she's like talking to him like, oh my God, like this, that, and the other. And then she gets a little bit personal and thinks that Teddy is Jim, which is her husband. And she starts like talking to him like he is her husband she even hugs him and everything yeah and then she like leans back and gets all mad at him because she's like but my gym is dead she like switches like that quickly like snap that quick yeah yeah and then they leave the room and dr collie says that they found her out by the lighthouse And that's kind of like, Teddy's super suspicious about that. And then... Teddy gets this terrible, terrible pain in his head. Yeah. Like a really bad migraine. And so they give him some pills and everything. And he takes them and he's just weak. Super weak. Yeah. And they have to go down to the basement. (laughs) Where everyone is like pretty much like hunkering down for the hurricane. Yeah. And my thing with that is I've seen enough movies and read enough books. Like, I would never take anything if I was at a mental institution just, like, visiting. I would never take any kind of pill. Same. (laughs) Like, that's not happening. Nope. Never mind. I'm good. I'll deal with it. You're like, nope. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I could deal with it. Like, nothing. Don't give me any food. Don't give me any water. Nothing. (laughs) I'm not going crazy on whatever you think you can get into my food or whatever pill you think you can give me. Not happening. (laughs) (laughs) But I don't see any situation where I would ever be in a mental institution without being crazy, so. Because I've lived near one, and I'm just like, nope. (laughs) I live right near one. Yeah, I lived literally... Right next to one, growing up. I'm like, so I'm like it's down nope. the street from me. It's our big yeah. one too of the state. The only thing <laughs> separating me and the one that I lived next to was someone's like farm property, but I could see it. Oh yeah. So, um, but so then we get a war dream. Like he's um. Teddy's dreaming about war, and he's, like, imagining He's walking things. through Dachau, and yeah, I he's... recognize this music. I was like, oh, I know this. It's a John Cage piece. Mm. It's, you're listening, you're like, okay, that sounds like a pre- prepared piano a little bit. So I'm like, that's definitely some John Cage. Gotcha. And I was right. <laughs> I looked it up. Um, But so then we see... Andrew Latis in the dream and that the guy that's playing him is actually um from SVU Law and Order he's not in it anymore but he was he's stabler in SVU yeah I know I recognized him um and he's like talking to Chuck or not Chuck he's talking to um Teddy and then he like turns into Chuck he says they're running out of time Yeah, and then we see Rachel and her dead kids. She's covered in blood. The kids are covered in blood. Yeah, and then we see the lake where she supposedly drowned them, and then he, like, startles awake. And there's all kinds of, um, or his wife, like, comes into the room. It's like, it seems like like he wakes up, but he doesn't. Yeah, because he, like, startles awake. But it wasn't, like, really awake. It's like like when you think you wake yourself up, but you didn't. (laughs) A dream within a dream. Yeah. Inception. (laughs) And then the Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Fell asleep during that movie as well. Because it was at the drive-in, it was the second movie. (laughs) Cat. (laughs) I'm lucky if I can stay awake during the first movie at the (laughs) drive-in. Let alone the second one. I was like, what number is that? It's pretty high up. Yeah. Um, but so his wife comes in and he's talking to her and, or talking to him about 
latest, she's like, you gotta find him, and this, that, and the other. And then he wakes up for real, and there's, like, chaos going all around. Like, there's all kinds of chaos, because the generator failed. So... <laughs> you have all these patients out. <laughs> they're just running all over the place. I'm like, well, that's gotta be fun. So much for your one patient gone. Now you got all of them You got gone. a bunch of them. So Chuck's like, with all this chaos, hey, let's go look at Ward C. Yeah. So they head over to Ward C. And then they go inside and they run into a guard. But the guard just assumes that they're orderlies because they have the orderlies uniforms on. Yeah. And he's like, just be careful. There's some crazy people out running around in here. <laughs> and I'm like, you think? No, it's just a, you know, it's a mental hospital. I'm not even going to expect as, you know, an insane person. Come on. Yeah. But, so, Teddy is, he's like, Latus is here. He's in this ward. And then, then we get the guy uh, playing tag. He's like, tag you it. <laughs> yeah. And then he, like, almost kills, um... He almost kills Teddy, but Teddy, like, fights him off, and then Teddy almost kills him. Yeah. And then Chuck and one of the other guards, um... They come and take that the- patient... Yeah. ...back to his cell, and so Teddy goes on, and he finds Noyce. Yeah, because he keeps hearing the name Latus. Yeah being called out and so it's like striking him he's like how do you know that name and so yeah and um when you see noise's face i kept like trying to place him the entire time um the actor that plays him who is uh his name is jackie earl haley (laughs) and i finally was able to place him (laughs) He plays Freddy Krueger in the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I know. Um, but I was, like, sitting there, I was like, I know that face. Especially with it, like, being, like, all beat up and everything. Because some of the, like, his cheekbones are super high. Like, one of them. Because it was, like, a broken cheekbone or something. So it's, like, super high. And that's it, almost exactly how one of his cheekbones looked in the makeup for Nightmare on Elm Street. So that's what really reminded me. I was like, I know that cheekbone. <laughs> <laughs> I know that cheekbone. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, I know him pretty well. But he's also in um, Alita Battle Angel, which just came out this past year. Um, and he's in quite a few things, but it was the it was the cheekbone that got me. I was like, I know him. <laughs> but so... Teddy's talking to him and stuff, and if you kind of listen to what he's saying, you're like, he's sitting there calling him latest, but Teddy doesn't register it that way. No. Even though Noyce is sitting there, you're the one that did this to me, like, you beat me up. This is you, and... Latest, like he's literally calling him latest, and he's like telling him, like, yeah, they're experimenting on people, and they're about to take me to the wa- the lighthouse, and it's all kinds of crazy. This guy's crazy, <laughs> and like noises just keeps telling, like at the very end, he's like, let her go. <laughs> yeah, he's like, how is you know, like, are they getting worse? You know, like his hallucinations or something because his wife appears like in the cell with noise yeah he's like you'll never leave this island if you can't forget about her yeah but he's like he just doesn't want to forget so and so um he stops talking to him he leaves because um Chuck finds him and he tells them that McPherson and Dr. Colley are in Ward C because they heard that some, someone beat up a patient. <laughs> like an orderly beat up a patient. Yeah. Yeah. So they are there to investigate. But while Chuck was gone, 
he happened to find a f- the intake form for Latus, and because of stuff that Noyce was saying, Teddy's like, you just hold on to it, I'll look at it in a little bit. He's like starting to get suspicious. Um, and so they're out walking around, and Teddy's like, yeah, we're gonna go to the lighthouse, we need to find out what's going on in that lighthouse. So, Chuck's like, well, I don't think that's a good idea. Like, he's trying to redirect him. Like, trying to get him not to go over there. But, Teddy's, like, reading into it. Like, getting even more suspicious than he was. Um, he's starting to think that, you know, uh, Chuck is in on whatever is going on on the island. And, so he... He's like, well, then I'll just go down there myself. And he, like, basically tells Chuck to leave him the fuck alone. (laughs) And so he tries getting closer to the lighthouse, but he's still a little bit off. And so he goes back to see if, like, Chuck's still there and he can't find him. Yeah. And And then he, like, looks down off the cliff and it looks like he fell. Because there's Chuck's cigarette also there. Yeah. Yeah, it does look like Like there's, like, a body down there. You're like, well, shit. (laughs) Yeah. So he climbs all the way down there, and he gets down there, and it's just, like, a shape of whiteness on the rock. Yeah, and on the- as he's climbing down, he sees the paper, the intake form that got stuck on the side of the cliff. Yep. And he's down there, and there's a ton of rats. And I'm just like, that's a lot of rats. Like, it looked like there's, I saw this documentary once, like, maybe 10, 15 minutes of it, because it just, somebody had turned it on to show me something, of seals, or something like that. Okay. And that's all this reminded me of, is just, like, a beach full of seals, but it was (laughs) rats. I was like, okay, that's weird. But that's, like, you just see him moving around, and then that just, like, reminded me of the documentary that I'd seen, like, 15 minutes of where they show the the view of all the seals on the beach. Because there's tons of them. Like, thousands, and that's how many rats there are. So I was like, okay, that's weird. But then he sees this cave that he somehow got past. And there's a light. Yes. And he finds a woman in there because he climbs up to it. And she is the real, that's in quotations, uh, Rachel. (laughs) And air quotes. And um, she said that she was a doctor at the hospital. Yeah. She said her name is Dr. Rachel Solando. It said she was a doctor before she was a patient there. Yeah, and then they basically made it seem like she was crazy because she was asking about like why all these diff- like dr- different drugs doing while the surgeries you're pretty much just turning them into ghosts yeah and she's saying that there's no way that he'll ever get off the island they're going to do the exact same thing to him that they did to her he's saying like have you or she's saying like have you ever been alone on the island have you been eating and drinking what they've been giving you have you been taking the pills He's just like, yeah. And she's like, well, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. She's like, everything's contaminated. So. Uh, and they said that he, she asked if he had any past trauma. And he's like, well, yeah, but most people do. And she's like, they will use that against you. Yeah. He's like, they're going to turn it out. And then they're going to tell your friends and family. And then they're, your friends and family are going to be like, oh, yeah, no wonder he snapped. Like, anybody would. They're like, oh, well, about time. But she's, like, saying that they're reprogramming people's brains to not feel pain or emotions or anything like that. Like, basically creating ghosts, people that they can just send into war and not care. Like, just go in and obey orders and that's it. And she was an example so. how the Germans, uh, the, the Nazis used, um, you know, the Jewish people and the concentration camps on experiments, you know, all these different people they yeah. used. And it's like, and we're just using the, the mental patients here. Yeah, she's saying that they do that brain surgery in the lighthouse. And he's like, well, who all knows? He's like, she's like, Everybody on this island knows. Like, everyone. (laughs) Um, 
But yeah, so then he, like, I guess falls asleep because it's about the end of the conversation. And then in the morning, she wakes him up and she's like, you gotta go. (laughs) Just, like, kicks him out. She's like, I move during the day and I'm always at a different place, so you gotta go. And then I was just, like, wondering, I'm like, what does she eat? Does she just, like, eat rats? Because that's the only thing that's on that island besides people that she could hunt. It's protein. Yeah, but not much. <laughs> I'm not saying one. <laughs> There's yeah, a bunch of no. them. You could kill a few. That, no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. But so, Teddy goes on and he's like walking around and he gets picked up by the warden. Warden's a creepy dude. Not gonna lie. And we, <laughs> we will see him later on our list, too. Um, he is in, um... Of course. I, 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 Silence of the Lambs. I was like, wait a minute, I know this fool. Yeah, he's in Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Buffalo so will, Bill! Yeah, we'll see him later. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it took me a second, I'm like, wait a minute, I know you. It was the eyes. Yeah. That's what got me. Yeah. It's his creepy eyes. <laughs> yeah. And that whole conversation he has with Teddy when they're driving back. Yeah. He's, like, talking about how they're both violent men and God loves violence and stuff like that. And I'm just like, what? And I'm like, I can kind of see his reasoning. Like, as many wars as there are and as many people that kill people as there are in this world, I can see that. Because there's a ton of people that, like, believe in God and then just go do all these bad things. Yeah. And, like, kill people. So I'm like, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he drops him back off at Ashcliff, and then, um, Teddy's talking to Dr. Colley, and he's, like, saying, yeah, I think we've gotten everything, like, there's nothing else for us to do here, so we're gonna head out on the next ferry. (laughs) And he's like, we? He's like, who are you talking about? You came by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> just like fucking with them. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, he's like, Teddy changes it to where like he starts playing along with him, pretending that he didn't come with a partner. He's like, oh, yeah, what? What partner? Yeah. And then so he's like sneaking around in the building. And he runs into the German doctor. And he's, like, talking to him for a minute. But then the German doctor has, like, a sedative in his his hand. And he's about to give it to Teddy. But Teddy, like, stops him and ends up giving it to the doctor. Yeah. And, like, he had um, had changed his new orderly clothes and everything. And his suit was ready. But he had grabbed the tie only. Yeah, he just went and grabbed the tie. And then we see him outside... And he's um, sneaking around outside, and he finds a car. It's a gorgeous car. Yeah. So pretty. And he's, like, imagining his wife again. And she's, like, saying, Chuck's in the lighthouse. And then he sees this little girl. And he he does a little tie, and he blows up the car. Blows up the car. Well, like, bursts into flames and everything, so. Yeah. And then so he's heading to the lighthouse. And he gets out there to the little island, which I'm just like, how in the world did he get out there? Because that's a lot of rocks between the lighthouse island and the island island. Because it's like, the lighthouse is not on the main island. (laughs) You should have heard Logan when we watched this. He's like, why does the lighthouse keep moving to places? It does! Every time you see that lighthouse is on a different rock. Yeah, that's what Logan said, too. And I was like, oh, I never noticed. Thanks for picking that up. Because the first time you see it, it's, like, up on this big high rock. And then the second time you see it, it's down low on the one, like, the one, it's on this, it's on that one twice. The low rock that's, like, out in the water that you can't get to. And then you see it a third time, and it's, like, super far out on some rock like really really far out and then he gets out there somehow and it's now it's a lot closer 
it's a lot closer, and it's super high up on a big, huge rock. I'm like, what? Okay, see? So it's not just yeah. one person to catch you that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Some of the some of the editing in this is a little questionable. Because <laughs> um, that's not the only thing that I noticed. Oh, uh, me too. But... Messed up, so... <laughs> me too. Um, but yeah, so he gets out there, and he's like, subdued this guard, and he's like, runs into the lighthouse and he's like running and checking all the rooms and he gets all the way to the top and Dr. Colley is there and he says uh, the baby why are you all wet and Teddy's like what it's like why are you saying that and he's like you know you know exactly why I said that and <laughs> so he's like searching the room and then Dr. Colley's like yeah that rifle's empty he's like he's like I was really sad about that he's like I- I'm sad about my car why I really like that yeah. car <laughs> And then he kind of lets it slip that Dr. Sheehan hasn't really been anywhere. Like, because he says Dr. Sheehan wants to talk to you or something like that. And uh, he's like, well, he's he just got in on the ferry then. And he's like, not exactly. It's like, no. And so he's talking about, he's like, Dr. Colley's asking about, like, oh, are the hallucinations getting worse? And, like, yeah. he's, like, shaking. He's, like, oh, because you're withdrawing from the medicine that you have not been on. Because you've been on medicine for the past two years. And Teddy's, like, what? You've been sneaking it to me in Boston? And he's, like, no. He's, like, no, you've been here for two years. And he's, yeah. like, I'm a U.S. Marshal. He's, like, you were a U.S. Marshal. <laughs> he's, like, here, read this intake form. You are Andrew Latis. And he's... And he just, like... Doesn't want to believe it. And it shows the board. It says Andrew Daniels equals Andrew Latis. Then it shows um, Rachel Solando equals Dolores Chanel or something like that. Because that's who was his wife's maiden name. Yeah. He's like trying to show him all this evidence that he is Latis and he made up Teddy Daniels as a kind of coping mechanism, I guess. It's like. Just to help him, because he can't forgive himself for what he did and what his wife did. Yeah. And he's, like, talking to him, telling him, like, showing him the, like, cause showing him all the evidence, telling him all the evidence, saying, oh, that gun's not real. So he breaks the gun in half. And he's like, what'd you do to my gun? Yeah, it like, and Chuck's, wait, who he thinks is Chuck, it's technically, because he has Dr. Sheehan come up, and that's really who Teddy thinks is Chuck. Yeah, and he's saying that he's been his primary doctor for the last two years. And that's why he was running around the island with him, because he was the only one that Andrew trusted to keep him safe. Really. And, like, he says they're doing this to, they're trying to prove that if they let him play this out, and if he, they can get him back to like to acknowledge that he really did everything... That, you know, be a breakthrough and because the warden is just tired of all this and he just wants, you know, do a lobotomy. Call it good. Yeah. He's just like, we're done with this. And, um, so he like, Dr. Colley shows him the pictures of his kids, even though Teddy keeps saying, I've never had kids. And then... He imagines his wife and daughter again. And then we get him with a flashback of, like, him remembering what happened. And so Exactly he, what like, happened. He comes home and he, like, takes a drink and then he notices his wife and kids aren't inside. So he's, like, calling her name and he goes outside and she's sitting on the little wooden swingy bench thing. And she's wet. And she's, like, soaking wet. And, um... She's saying the kids are in school. And, and he's like, no, they're not. It's Saturday. And he's like, well, she's like, well, my school's in. And she's all creepy looking and everything with her eyes. And, and all so that. he looks to the lake and he sees three floating things in there. Yeah, then he goes in there and he realizes that's his kids. And he, like, picks them all up and lugs them out of the lake and lines them all up and is pretty upset, understandably. And then uh, <laughs> she says that we can, um, you know, get him dried off, change him up, you know, put him at the table and everything, yeah. you know, like have a di- lunch, with, you know, with them. They could be our dolls. Yeah. 
and that she's like, we can take him on a picnic soon. And I'm like, oh yeah. my god, she and has he's, freaking he's, lost it. Yeah, and he's just like, will you please shut up? He's like, if you've ever loved me, I need you to stop talking. I'm like, well, yeah. that's completely understandable. Well, and then she like changes her tune and she's like begging him to kill her. She's like, without saying the word. She's words. like, set she's me like, free. Yeah. So she doesn't exactly say, kill me, but he knows what it means. And so he does. He shoots her. In the stomach. Yeah. And so she dies. And then he wakes up. And fake Rachel is his nurse. So, like, the chick that played the Rachel that was supposedly lost. Not the not the Rachel that was in the cave, but the one that was supposedly skipping rocks on the beach. That somehow got out of her cell. She's his nurse, and um, Dr. Carly and Dr. Sheehan are there, and they're, like, asking him questions, like, do you know who you are now? And he's explaining everything, like, he says he understands. He's saying how he never got his wife the help that she needed, because he knew that she was manic-depressive. Yeah. Bipolar, technically. Um, Yeah. And that his wife told him that she had this... What was it? Like a... Something in her brain, like a bug or something. I'm trying to remember the exact wording. I don't remember what she said. She just knew she was sick and he knew she was sick and he didn't do anything about it. So he's like blaming himself for her and his kids being dead. Because if he had done something about it, none of them would be dead. Yeah. And so he's telling him, he's like, because they're telling him he's been through all of this before, but he regressed. And he's like, well, I think I can do it this time. Like, he thinks he can, like, stay sane and not revert back into Teddy. But then the next thing that we see is him and Chuck slash Dr. Sheehan sitting on the steps and he's there he teddy's like talking about how he how they need like what they're going to do next in the investigation and how they're not going to catch him like the the they're not smart enough to catch him it's like we need to get off this rock yeah and so chuck looks over at the warden and dr collie and the german doctor guy and like shakes his head and um Then some orderlies come up and you see the lobotomy needle. Like, they're about to lobotomize him. Yeah. But then he says this one line, which I want to save it for when we get to lines. That's mine, too. (laughs) I love that line. He says says that one line and that takes... And that, (laughs) like, all the ambiguity that would have been there is instantly gone. You're like... He's like... What? (laughs) Yeah, but it's a really good line. God, I love that line. So, so I'm going to save it. Same. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's the end of the movie. He's like walking off with the orderlies and the warden to go get lobotomized. So yeah, that's that. Um, so, the music. No one specifically did this music because like you pointed out, um, there's some... John Cage. Yeah, John Cage. There's some other music in there by other people so the person like really credited for the music in this is robbie robertson and he was really just the director of music so he picked what went in it and like how they would use the music and certain things like that and he is known for the wolf on wall street from 2013 ladder 49 from 2004 the irishman from 2019 and The Last Waltz from 1978. So he's got some big movies under his belt. Uh, the first thing he ever did was Bandstand. It's a TV show. He did one episode in 1966. And he's currently working on a movie called Killers of the Flower Moon that's going to come out in 2021. I think that's another Scorsese movie. Because that okay. sounds familiar to me. 
gotcha. and like hold up i want to look and <laughs> say so he he works with scorsese quite a bit because the wolf on wall street is scorsese like you said earlier so he works with him quite a bit i think he just likes it is his music direction so i was like well, that makes sense i'm like i called it yep it's another scorsese um, movie yes i knew it <laughs> so yeah uh the music i feel like fit pretty well in this it was um they did a good job of building tension where it needed to be built and then i kind of like leaving it alone sometimes so i enjoyed the music in this there's only one part that irritated me it's like when they're walking like driving through and everything the music seems like super loud and like kind of out of place i'm like i would wish it would just been toned down just a little bit because when i think of like trying to give like suspenseful stuff and everything i think a lot quieter yeah there was a few times when the music was a little bit loud so i can i know exactly what you're saying there okay good yeah i did notice that too but i mean for the most part most part yes i like the it. music was good there was just some times when i'm like okay you could tone it down a little bit but i think that kind of goes with the editing because some of the editing in this movie wasn't the greatest either. Yeah. Which we already kind of talked about. I was like, there the was also <laughs> some green screen stuff. I was like, I I, yeah. I know that's a green screen. Yeah. Let's not lie here. Um, yeah. So, comparison. Like we said, this is a book. And we were both actually able to read it. Yeah. Um, so, a couple of the major differences... It goes a lot more into his war flashbacks in the movie. We don't really get any war flashbacks in the book. No. And then, like like I was saying, the ambiguity at the end, they don't end it exactly the same way. Like, you do get that Chuck and Teddy scene at the end again, but it doesn't seem like Teddy knows. It seems like maybe Teddy thinks he's still Teddy, not... Not, um... Andrew so like there's a like depending on how you read it it could be they possibly made him crazy on the island made him like out to be Andrew or he really is Andrew and he's just crazy enough not to see it so it's the book is more ambiguous because uh, it doesn't have that one line that's probably going to end up being our our favorite probably line of the movie. i like that's why i said earlier my <laughs> friends and i discussed it for like hours afterwards yeah um and then the clues like the the one the written on the paper one there was actually two of them right i think there was well there was one written and then there was like the rocks or something there was a bunch of different ones there was the rocks there was the paper um what else there was a bunch of other, like, little clues that he kept thinking that Rachel was, like, leaving him. And um, the one clue, the, like, Law of Thor, it was a whole bunch of, like, numbers and stuff. Yes. And it ended up, it always kept adding up to 13. So, that was another thing. But I will say, it stuck really close to the book. Yes. Like, the changes weren't huge, so it's right there with Stand By Me being very close like, one of the closest to book-to-movie things. Like, Stand By Me, I think, is still a little bit more, because they literally only changed, like, maybe two things. Whereas, um, in this one, they changed a few, but not a ton. So. But I really did enjoy this book. I liked it a lot. Oh, yeah. Really good book. I like, flew through it. Like, I did not want to put it down. <laughs> I had to, but I had to stop. I made sure to stop places I knew I could pause for. <laughs> yeah, I had to stop. I didn't want to stop, <laughs> but I, but I did it. But yeah, um, He's like especially that was, last part, you just gotta just keep going. Yeah, I think I read the last like hundred and twenty pages in in one day because I was just like, I can't, same like, actually. I, I have to finish reading this today. Yeah. So yeah, um, but it was it was a really good book, and I definitely recommend it if you like reading, especially if you've seen this movie because it's cool to see the little differences and kind of imagine it 
with the characters and like seeing like imagining um Mark Ruffalo and Leonardo DiCaprio going through these extra little things here here and there um so trivia I don't have any trivia for this um there's just a few like just back to like really to like his war flashbacks so it does say at Dachau um that really did happen, them shooting all those guards. That yeah. really did happen, like, in history. They just didn't make that up. It did happen when the camp was liberated. Um, and you see, it, it at Dachau, it has the same um, gate. Like, um, the same gate inscription as Auschwitz. The same thing. Hmm. Work sets you free. Which I thought, I'm like, I didn't know that. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Because Auschwitz is very famous for that gate. Yeah. And Dachau has the same thing. Which I'm like, huh. That makes sense now. Yeah. Um, what else? So, with that last line in the movie, um, the one that Teddy says that it's pretty much going to be, that's like one of my favorite lines. Um, yeah, it's not in the book at all, like we said. And that um, there's people that have, like, this is why my friends and I talked about it so much, because that line. They're like, did he accept his fate? Is he really sane? He just, like, saying, just, you know, screw it. I'm just going to be like, I'm done having to deal with this. Or is he really yeah. crazy still? I mean, it's like there's just so much going on that even Scorsese's like, I don't have an answer for you. Yeah. But see, yeah, that's, I think that's where it's, like, open, open to interpretation. Because you can see it one way or you can see it the other. Um, but it also makes you more inclined to see it one way rather than the ending of the book that makes you more open to it could be either or, I feel like. I think it's the other way around for me. I feel like the book's pretty solid and the movie's just like, uh, I don't know. That's me. Um, I like this one. Um, so, I think this is cool. Makes sense. So, in the book, there's a lot of anagrams. So, like with Edward yeah. Daniels is is you know andrew latest and everything so the title of the book is actually an anagram it's truth and lies oh cool. and tr or truth and denials i'm like oh that makes sense which i think is cool gotcha so yeah i mean that's pretty much it gotcha um so, where it has been on the list before, and where it's at now, in 2010 it was not on the list, and I think that's partially because of it coming out so early in the year. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of good movies that came out in 2010. Mm -hmm. So, it kind of just kind of got pushed back a little bit. But then 2012 it was number 234. 2014 it was number... 209 2016 it was number 188 2018 number 171 and then as of today when we are recording it is number 161 so it has been moving up oh, good. I think <laughs> right around here is probably where it's gonna stay probably right around the 160s or so so previously number 174 the 2010 list the thing from 1982 the 2012 list, The Night of the Hunter from 1955, the 2014 list, Incendies from 2010, 2016 list, No Country for Old Men from 2007, the 2018 list, Rebecca from 1940, and then as of today when we are recording, Fargo from 1966. So, that the last two there, Fargo and Rebecca, are coming up on our list here soon. So, podcast trivia. Um, 
this is the second film we have seen quite a few of our actors in because we had um, Leonardo DiCaprio already in Catch Me If You Can. Mm -hmm. And then we had Mark Ruffalo in Spotlight and also our um, superhero, our first superhero event and our second superhero event. Uh, he's in both of those for Avengers. And then Ben Kingsley, we had him before in Gandhi. So quite a few of our actors we've had before and then also quite a few of the actors that are in this we're going to be having again. So there's some big people in this movie. Yes. This is our second movie from 2010. Um, we recently did Shutter Island. Or not Shutter. This is Shutter Island. <laughs> uh, we recently did How to Train Your Dragon. That was our first movie from 2010. So this is the second one we've had. And we will have a few more coming up. Uh, da, da, da. This is our highest amount of votes on a movie. So this one has 1,050,000. The next one under it for a movie that we've done is 955,000. So almost 100,000 more. <laughs> so it's, it'll probably be our highest voted one for a while, I think. Once we get closer to the top, though, it's going to get bumped down a little. <laughs> yeah, but I think for at least the next... 50 to maybe even 100 this one will be our top voted for for that i can um, understand that so could i i told you something i don't know if i remember if you don't remember if you responded to me or not about this uh yeah hold on um this is the only movie that has a 68 on our list um, from Rotten Tomatoes. And then this one is at a 63 on Metacritic, which is with Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets from our event and Her Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. So those are the two movies that it was with for Metacritic and then it's by itself for Rotten Tomatoes. And that is all the podcast trivia I have. It's like I have one amazingly because i've looked this up um so when this shutter island is released our podcast for this um four days later on will be the 10th anniversary of this movie yep 10th anniversary of it coming out so i think that's really cool timing <laughs> yeah and i did respond to you i just added something else to the message so you probably didn't see the response okay <laughs> um so, yeah, that's all of our podcast trivia for that. So, favorite line. I have five, I think. Okay. I can go. Um, sanity is not a choice. We don't choose to get over it. Yeah. Um, this is on the plaque as they're coming in. Remember us too, for we have lived, laughed, and lived, laughed, and loved. Oh yeah, I was gonna write that down, but it went by too fast. I was like, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, you act like insanity is catching. Oh, I wrote that one down too. It's a good one. Uh, two more. Can my violence conquer yours? And then this is probably my favorite. Um, this place makes me wonder uh, to live as a monster or die as a good man. Yep. Um, I wrote that one down too. Um, some other ones. I don't think I had that many more. Give them a pill. Put them in the corner and be done. Um, it's an island boss. They're always going to find us. And then I think I only have one more. Marshall, you have no friends. Just 
trying to look that quote up. The exact the quote. Way you said it. Yeah. And the way I said, oh, here it is. I wrote it down. Like I was, I had to write it down quickly so I didn't get it all of it down. It says this place, okay. which makes me wonder, which would be worse, to live as a monster or die as a man, good man. Yeah. So the, what I was gonna write down is which would be worse, to live as a monster or to die as a good man because there's a line in between this place makes me wonder because chuck says something so that works chuck says yeah what's that boss and then he says which would be worse so we'll do the which would be worse to live as a monster or to die as a good man all right so what is your rating i'm giving this an eight um I loved it. I really did. It just fits good with my eights. Um, again, the music sometimes bugged me a little bit. And then some of the editing and the um, green screen, which is really obvious, kind of bothered me. But other than that, it's a great story. Love the movie. I love the book. Great acting. I love the twist ending. So, yeah. That's my eight. Yeah. Um, I am giving it an eight as well. A lot of the same reasons. Um, I do like the story a lot. Uh, just some of the CGI, like, I felt like when they are running to the mausoleum, some of that CGI with the flying branches and stuff was kind of bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also on the, the boat, when they're on the boat at the beginning, I felt like that was green screen and they were on a sound stage. Yeah. Cause that water did not look real. Um, and then some of the editing, like the, the lighthouse Island constant, like the lighthouse constantly being on a different Island. <laughs> um, so the editing on that was a little bit bad. And then there was a couple times when like people would do a motion and then it would cut away, and then it would cut back, and they'd do that same exact motion. Like, um, Chuck taking the paper out of his, like, the intake form out of his pocket. He, like, did it, and then it cut away, and then it cut back, and he did it again. And then there would be times where Teddy would have a drink in his hand, and he'd, like, very grumpy put it down, and then, uh... The next time it cut back to him, he had it in his hand again, and it was, like, a second. So I'm just like, there's a few editing mistakes. Yeah. But, I mean, I love it a lot. And then uh, one thing I said I was going to talk about that I forgot, um, one of the clue things. Yes. So him continually on that Portland thing. I think there's a possibility he kept getting Portland from maybe... Um, Dr. Sheehan is from Portland and he had told him that and that's why he kept saying Portland like a subconscious thing that so that was like that was my one thought of why he kept saying Portland even though Chuck said he was from Seattle hmm. maybe that's what I thought it's like maybe it was a subconscious connection that he didn't realize but yeah um I really do like this movie and like the more you watch it the more clues you can look for as to either way. Yeah. As to what it could, like, how you could interpret the ending. So that's really cool. But yeah. So that's an eight for me. Just because there was some mistakes with certain things that could have been easily fixed. They just, I guess, decided not to. Because a February movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's a February movie. They're like, eh, people won't notice that. <laughs> But I mean, you get a, a million, at least a million people, somebody's going to notice it. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoy this movie a lot, so it's okay. I'll overlook it. For now. For now. Um, so our next film is The Bandit, which is Turkish, I believe. Yeah. Um, and I think it's in black and white as well, so we get another black and white movie. Uh, I'm seeing in color, but... Oh, all the stuff I've seen about it is black and white. Oh. So maybe the version I have is black and white. Maybe. I don't know. But that is from 1966. So what? we will... No, 1996. <laughs> I was like, wait, it's not that old. 
Um, I mean, it's yeah, so, 20 years, but still. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, The Bandit from 1996. That will be out next week. Our next event coming up is our superhero event. And the two movies that I chose are Batman Mask of the Phantasm and are from 1993 and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse from 2018. And I picked Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from 1995 and Adventures Endgame from 2019. So make sure you check that out. That will be out the week after The Bandit. So two weeks from today, that will those four episodes will be out. We are offering premium and Patreon. Um, those two just help us pay for the website. Um, so for a dollar a month, you will get uncut episodes, early release episodes, and a bonus episode every month. For $5 a month, you'll get all of that. Plus, you'll be able to join us for a movie of your choice every 50 movies. And you'll be able to vote on episodes, like the special monthly episodes coming up. Because we're getting to the point where we are out of things to do. (laughs) Um, So, you can start voting on things. And then for $10 a month, you will get all of that. Plus, be able to... Do, you'll be able to watch a live stream Q&A with us once a month. And then instead of it being every 50 movies, you can join us for every 25 movies or for an event besides the Harry Potter event because that one is already settled. Um, our next special episode. So we just did our Oscar predictions last week. Um, came out the same day as Hacksaw Ridge. And our Razzie nominations, if it's not out yet, they should be coming out soon. We haven't quite gotten all the dates for the that at the time we're recording this. So um, that will be your next episode if it's not out already. And if it is out already, then your episode for March is going to be a least favorite. It will be Star Wars Attack of the Clones. God damn it. <laughs> Hey, I've already been tortured, so it's your turn. <laughs> this um, is my second one. <laughs> yeah, I've had two. What's the other one? Batman and Robin. Oh, that fucker. And Frozen. Okay, fine. Fine, I'll have to watch it. God damn it. <laughs> so, thank you very much. I have been tortured. It's my turn. Great. Um, so, make sure you check all of those out. And... If you can't do that, if you can't support us monetarily, that is perfectly fine. We don't mind doing this for free. We're having fun, so it doesn't really matter. Um, So you can help us out by doing ratings and reviews. Ratings help us get more listeners, help more people find us, and reviews let us know what you guys like and what you don't like. So you can talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can email us. All those links are in the show notes. Um, If you are ever looking for an episode, they are all on our website, um, catandjesstalkthebest.podbean.com. And our music is by Audio Binger. You can find him on Facebook, YouTube, and his website, audiobinger.net. So until next time with... The Bandit. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. Bye.